All right, guys, here is the third book in our Mr. McGee series. Now today here in Rochester, it's almost 90 degrees. So it's so incredibly hot out, which I'm not gonna complain about because I love the heat. I would much rather have it hot than cold. But I decided to read the third story in this series and it's Learning to Ski with Mr. McGee. Now maybe this will help cool me down and make me think of a little bit cooler temperatures, but not much. Like it's going to be 90, so 85 might be perfect for me. And remember, our author and our illustrator is Chris Van Dusen. Maybe this will inspire you guys to go check out more books written and illustrated by Chris Van, Zoo Van Dusen. I hope it does. One winter morning at 6.53, Mr. McGee and his little dog, D, works, <clears throat> woke to fresh snow and a beautiful sky and decided it's time to give skiing a try. Before we drive all the way up to Mount Snow, follow me, D. I know right where to go. Across from the house and just up the way is a great little hill with a view of the bay. We'll practice up there until we learn how to ski. Then we'll head for the mountain, said Mr. McGee. So they're gonna do a little practice trial run before they head to the really big mountain, like Mrs. Ferrer would ski on. I would stick to the small, like they call them the bunny hill, a small slope where Mrs. Ferrer is an amazing skier. So she would ride the chairlift all the way up to the top of the mountain and ski down. So I'm more like Mr. McGee and D. I'm just kind of learning. I enjoy skiing, but I'm still not really great at it. I have to keep working at it. A few minutes later, they came to a spot where nothing could get in their way. At least that's what McGee thought. So he put on his skis and D hopped in the pack. And with poles in his hands and his dog on his back, he inched to the edge very slowly until his skis teeter-tottered, then started downhill. What do you think is gonna happen? Based on the other two stories we've read about Mr. McGee, what can you predict that's about to ensue hmm, or about to occur? Not far down the hillside from Mr. McGee and just out of sight, there just happened to be a curious moose. <laughs> he was out on a search for the succulent sticks of the great northern birch. A birch is a type of tree. Then he spotted the tree, the biggest he'd seen, on the opposite side of a gaping ravine. So the ravine is here, it's kind of like the valley something he'd have to cross over to get to that tree. The moose turned around and what did he see? Mr. McGee and his little dog D. The moose was so shocked he stood frozen in fear. But Mr. McGee hadn't learned how to steer. <laughs> and he knew very soon they were going to collide. So he called to the moose. Would you please step aside? Collide means to crash. <laughs> but the moose didn't move, so McGee yelled, duck! And that was the moment they ran out of luck. Because while they were sliding right under the moose, the tips of the skis snagged the log of a spruce. So a spruce is another type of tree. The moose was crossing the ravine to get to a birch tree. The skis got snagged on a spruce tree. In a flash and a flip, they flew over the log, tossing poor Mr. McGee and his dog head over heels straight into the gap. Oh boy. When the ends of the skis came down with a slap. So there they were stranded, McGee and his pup across a ravine a hundred feet up. 
they always seem to be getting into these precarious situations and they always seem to be on the edge of something dangerous. They hung there, suspended, not making a sound. When the moose came back, he, he looked all around. Hmm, he didn't see D or McGee, but what's this? A bridge to the birch above the abyss. So there's the birch tree he'd been searching for. And now all he can see and think about is getting to that birch tree. So all he really sees is a bridge as opposed to McGee and Dee suspended underneath in the valley or in the ravine, I should say. The moose took a step. Look at McGee's face. <laughs> I can only imagine how he's feeling at that moment. How would you be feeling? What do you think is about to happen? He was steady and slow, but his weight caused the skis to sag and to bow. It means to bend. And when he looked down, his heart skipped a beat. For Mr. McGee was right under his feet. With a snort, the moose leapt. The skis went spring. They popped in the air with a zip and a zing. And up like a rocket, D shot D and McGee. Ooh, these two words jumped out at me. Zip, zing. Do you guys remember when you made that list of words with Mrs. Ferreira? Words that um, sound it's like they sound they're sound words words that kind of convey a sound mm, like buzz zip zing do you remember what those words were called onomatopoeia hmm <laughs> this book is full of them but for some reason those just popped out at me so they popped in the air with a zip and a zing and up like a rocket shot d and mcgee Landing feet first, just as safe as could be. Well, that was exciting, said Mr. McGee, but I'm not really sure we learned how to ski. I think that I might need a lesson or two. I think that perhaps that's the best thing to do. And when we get home, he said with a smile, Hmm. We'll let someone else use the skis for a while. So after that adventure, I think they might hang up their skis for a little bit. The end. Now guys, this is the last um, Mr. McGee book I have in this series. And these reading these two has reminded me of just how much I love them. So I'm actually going to go on and see our there are other some Mr. McGee stories in this series. And if there are, I will order them up and get them on here with books with Bowman because I'm hoping that you're enjoying them as much as I am. All right, on to the next one.